Animals come in all shapes and sizes, but every complex multicellular creature has one thing in common. It started life as one cell. That cell and all of the cells that it spawns copy themselves, divide, and transform again and again and again to build specialized complex bodies containing anywhere from millions of cells to more than a thousand trillion individual living units. A body like yours contains around 37 trillion cells. To build a human, factoring in the huge number of cells that die and are lost along the way, scientists estimate it takes 10 to the 16th cell divisions. During your lifetime, that's 10 million billion times that the machinery of the cell and its DNA instructions will be copied, which is a lot of chances to make mistakes. Every cell division carries a risk of creating errors and mutations, most of these are harmless, but a few rare mutations can destroy the genetic programs or break down the machinery that control a cell's life and death, giving it the power to divide uncontrollably. We call this cancer. So, logically speaking, the larger an animal is and the longer that it lives, it should be more likely to get cancer. In fact, because humans are living longer and longer, the odds of developing cancer at some point in your lifetime are about 20%. And it's been found that for every 10 centimeters taller a person is, their risk of developing cancer goes up by 10%. When you consider all of this, the obvious conclusion is biologically and mathematically speaking, giant long-lived animals like elephants should have all the cancer. So should blue whales and hippos and giraffes and rhinoceroses and megalodon. Hey, smart people. Joe here. Let's run some quick numbers. The average human weighs about 70 kilograms and has approximately 37 trillion cells in their body. An elephant that weighs 5,000 kilograms, well, that's 70 times more cells than a human has. A blue whale, the largest thing to live on Earth ever, weighs about 150,000 kilograms, which means it has over 2,000 times as many cells as a human about 79 million billion cells, which is nuts. A giant animal means more cells. More cells equals more cell divisions, and more cell divisions means more chances of mutations that could let a cell become cancerous. So an elephant should have like 70 times higher odds of cancer than you or me. And for a blue whale then, it should be like 2000 times higher. I think that math works out. Well, logic says that giant animals should get tons of cancer. But the weird thing is, they just don't. This puzzle is known as Pedo's Paradox, because scientists love alliteration, and because it's named after a scientist named Richard Pedo. Pedo noticed that even though mice have a thousand times fewer cells than humans and have lifespans 30 times shorter, both species get cancer at about the same rate. And as scientists have looked across the animal kingdom, body size, lifespan, and cancer rates just don't seem to be associated like you'd predict from numbers alone. So what is protecting the animal kingdom's utmost examples of enormity and old age from an unfortunate end thanks to oncological illness? Was that, was that too much? Why big thing not get cancer? It's possible that large animals have evolved better mechanisms for catching and correcting mutations before they get too dangerous. Now, for a cell to go down the pathway to cancer, it usually requires more than one mutation in more than one type of cancer-causing gene. There are so-called oncogenic or tumor-producing genes. Now, when these are mutated and broken, they're basically always on, and they're telling the cell to keep dividing uncontrollably. But there are also genes whose job it is to keep cells from doing that, the so-called tumor suppressor genes. Tumor suppressor genes work by acting as a kind of roadblock, keeping cell division from moving forward, or as signals to self-destruct the cell if things go wrong. 
Now, interestingly, when scientists looked at the genome of elephants for one particular tumor suppressor gene, they had 20 copies of it, and we have just one copy of it. This means that an elephant's tumor preventing security system has like 20 layer redundancy. Larger animals also have slower metabolic rates than smaller animals. So smaller animals create more DNA damaging byproducts, which means larger animals may get fewer mutations per cell. Now, of course, no one's out there putting blue whales in CAT scans, so it could be that some large animals actually do get cancer, but it just doesn't kill them, so we don't notice it. And this is where giant size could be a lifesaver. You can imagine that in an animal the size of a bus, a tumor needs to be pretty gigantic to actually impact the animal's health. But hungry cancer cells also compete viciously with each other for resources. So the larger that a tumor gets, smaller hypertumors may act as kind of parasites on the original tumor and starve it so that it can't grow large enough to be deadly. Cancer is probably as ancient as multicellular life. I mean, as soon as an organism evolves to have multiple specialized cells working together for the good of the whole, there's serious evolutionary pressure to make sure that one cell doesn't mutate and try to outcompete all the rest, especially at the expense of killing the whole organism. So any animal that evolved to be giant also had to evolve stronger defenses against cancer, or else it probably didn't survive. Basically, if your species gets big and lives a long time, that means you figured out a way not to be a walking tumor. The paradox actually makes a lot of sense when you put it that way. But what scientists hope is that by studying how these giant animals don't die of cancer, maybe we can learn some new tricks for fighting cancer in our own species. Because part of the paradox may just be that cancer rates in humans are shockingly high. And this may have something to do with our modern diet and lifestyle. Scientists have found across the animal kingdom, cancer mortality is tightly linked to what an animal eats, with mammals that eat other mammals facing the highest rates of cancer death. Now, cancer isn't new in humans. A handful of ancient mummies have been diagnosed with tumors, but cancer rates in people are higher today than ever before. In modern industrialized nations, thanks to a combination of less physical activity and diets that are loaded with calories and sugar and salt and fat, well, increased weight alone puts humans at risk of at least 13 types of cancer. And this lifestyle has spread around the world with pretty sad results. Within a couple of decades of switching to a Western type diet, people living on Pacific and Indian Ocean islands experienced a massive surge in so-called diseases of civilization, like diabetes and cancer. Another major factor is how much pollution and cancer-causing chemicals we've put into the environment around us. These environmental carcinogens, they play a role in up to 75% of human cancers. Even whales are not immune from this one. The one place in the world where whales get as much cancer as humans is Canada's St. Lawrence River estuary, where agricultural and industrial pollutants have accumulated for decades. And of course, a few lifestyle habits that can lead to cancer are uniquely human. I mean, whales don't use tobacco products or drink alcohol that we know of. It's pretty clear there's not one single answer to Peto's paradox. As usual, evolution has come up with many answers to the cancer problem in large and long-living animals. Life, as they say, finds a way. Humans, well, we can't accelerate our own evolution to become naturally cancer-free. But we do have one unique advantage. We can study evolution's answers and figure out new ways to treat the cancers that we do get. It wouldn't hurt to eat a little better too, I guess. Maybe krill is the next cancer-fighting superfood. <laughs> Stay curious. And just one more thing, I know what you're thinking. You're like, how could I possibly support this show more than by just watching their videos? Well, you could join our Patreon. 
There's a link down in the description where you can learn more about our perks and the various levels of support. We literally could not do this without all of our wonderful supporters. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video. Assuming you click the, the button. You're gonna click it, right? Go check it out. Hmm? Very large bison. And polar bears. Hmm? Okay. What? Yeah? Mm-hmm. Huh? You done yet? Okay. <laughs> That's my cries and tall person face. Okay. One take Hanson.